We're going to talk about the long-term capital gains tax for beginners. Long-term capital gains, they're going to be applicable to the stock markets and to the cryptocurrency markets. There's going to be three different tax rates for long-term capital gains. There's going to be the 20% tax rate. There's going to be the 15% tax rate. And there's going to be the 0% tax rate. So I'm going to tell you how you get one of these rates. And I'm going to tell you what is a long-term capital gain. And I'm going to tell you the other taxes that you will be subject to. So let's begin. First, let me tell you what is a capital gain. A capital gain means that you made money by selling an investment. So if you made money working, that is not a capital gain. That is ordinary income because you did not make that money by investing. You made that money by working. So some examples, if you sold your home for a gain, then that gain would be a capital gain. If you made money in stocks, that would be a capital gain. If you lost money in stocks, then that would be a capital loss. If you made money in cryptocurrencies, then those would be capital gains. So now you know what a capital gain is. A capital gain is money that you make from your investments. There are two types of capital gains. There are short-term capital gains and there are long-term capital gains. If you make money from working, you're gonna pay taxes at your regular, ordinary, normal tax rates. If you make money from short-term capital gains, then you're gonna pay taxes at your regular, ordinary, normal tax rates. If you make money from long-term capital gains, then you're gonna pay taxes at a much better and more favorable tax rate. In other words, if you make money from your investment and it's classified as a long-term capital gain, then you're gonna save a lot of money in taxes. So the question is, what makes a short-term capital gain a short-term capital gain and what makes a long-term capital gain a long-term capital gain? If you buy an investment and you hold it for one year or less and then you sell it, then it's gonna be a short-term capital gain. If you buy an investment and you hold it for longer than one year and then you sell it, then it's gonna be a long-term capital gain. So the difference between a short-term capital gain and a long-term capital gain is simply the amount of time that you held the investment for, that's it. Ultimately, if you hold the investments for greater than one year, then you're gonna get a better tax treatment and that you're gonna pay less in taxes. So I'll give you some examples. Let's just say that you buy a stock and then you hold it for one month and then you sell it and then you make a lot of money. That's gonna be taxed as a short-term capital gain because you held it for one month, which is less than one year. Another example is you buy a stock and then you sell it seven years later and then you make a lot of money. In that situation, it's gonna be taxed as a long-term capital gain because you held it for seven years, which is greater than one year. To recap, we've identified what is a capital gain. A capital gain is money that you made from an investment. And we've identified what is a long-term capital gain. It just means that you held onto the investments for longer than one year before selling it. Now we're gonna move on to tax rates for long-term capital gains. There's gonna be three tax rates for long-term capital gains. There's gonna be the 0%, there's gonna be the 15%, and there's gonna be the 20%. What tax rate that you're gonna be subject to is gonna depend on your total income. So we're not talking about just the income that you made from your investments, we're talking about your total overall income. So you're gonna include the money that you made from your job, from your investments, from your interest, dividends, your side income, everything, your total income. If you're single and your total income is under about $52,500 in a year, then you're gonna be in the 0% long-term capital gains tax rates. So that means that you're gonna pay $0. You're gonna pay nothing in taxes for your investment sale. So I say about $52,500 because that figure, it gets adjusted for inflation just a little bit every year. So let me give you two examples to clarify the situation. In this situation, let's just say that your only source of money for the entire year was money that you made in the stock markets. So let's say in this scenario, you bought Tesla stock a while back. You bought Tesla stock many years ago. So you held it for greater than one year. And then you sold it this year for a big gain. Let's just say you made $35,000 profits. So if that is your only source of income, you made $35,000 total income, which is under 
the $52,500 threshold. If that's the case, then all of your long-term capital gains will be taxed at the 0% tax rate, which means that you're gonna pay nothing. You're gonna pay $0 in taxes. That was a straightforward example. So let me give you another example that is much more complex. So let's say in this situation, you bought Tesla stock and you held it for greater than a year and you sold it and you made $20,000 in profit. So you made a $20,000 gain. And let's say that you work a job and you make $50,000 at your job. So your total income is gonna be $50,000 from your job and $20,000 that you made from your investments. So a total of $70,000. In this situation, you're gonna be over the threshold of 52,500. So what's gonna happen in this situation? So this is, this is what's gonna happen. The $50,000 that you made at your job, that's gonna be taxed at the regular, normal, ordinary rates. Because again, we're, that's, not, that's not a capital gain. That's just regular income you make that's gonna be taxed at your regular rates. So then that's $50,000. The next 2,500, because remember, the threshold is $52,500. So the next $2,500 of long-term capital gains from your Tesla gain, that's gonna be taxed at the 0% tax rate. So the $2,500 you make, you're not gonna pay any taxes on that. But then the rest of the money that you made on your Tesla sale as a long-term capital gain, that's gonna be taxed at the 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. Before we move on to the 15% tax rate, I just wanna say for the 0% long-term capital gains tax rate, we were using the threshold of $52,500. That's the case for a single person. If you're married, so if you're doing married filing jointly, then that threshold to be in the 0% long-term capital gains tax rate, it's gonna be double. So it's gonna be one about $105,000. Moving on to the 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. If you buy a stock and you hold it for greater than a year and then you sell it for a profit and your total income is between $52,500 to $454,000, then you're gonna be subject to the 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. So let me give you an example to clarify. Let's just say that you bought Bitcoin for $10,000 and you held onto that Bitcoin for a long time, greater than a year, and then you sold your Bitcoin for $11,000. So you bought it for $10,000 and then you sold it for 11,000. So you made a $1,000 gain. If you are in the 15% long-term capital gains tax rates, then you're gonna pay $150 in taxes on your $1,000 gain. So it's as simple as that, you take your gain, and then you multiply it by what tax rate that you're in. So I wanna make it very clear that you're only paying taxes on your gains, not on the entire sale of the $11,000, only on the money that you made as profits. If you have total income above $454,000, then your long-term capital gains tax rate is gonna be 20%. It's gonna increase from 15% to 20%. So let's recap what you've learned so far. You've learned what is a capital gain. A capital gain is money that you made from an investment. And you learned that long-term capital gains, they're gonna give you much more favorable tax rates compared to short-term capital gains. And you learned the difference between a short-term capital gain versus a long-term capital gain is simply the difference of how long you held the investment for, more than a year or not. And you learned that long-term capital gains, they have three tax rates. They have the 0% tax rate, the 15% tax rate, and the 20% tax rate. And which tax rate is applicable to you is gonna depend on your total income that you make. So I wanna end by saying two very important things, and I'll make this quick. On top of the long-term capital gains tax rate, there's a separate tax, completely separate. It's called the net investment income tax and it's 3.8%. So it's gonna get tacked on on top of your capital gains taxes. This is gonna be applicable to you if you're single and your total income is $200,000 or more, or if you're married and your combined income is $250,000 or more. So again, that's the net investment income tax and it's an additional 3.8%. The second thing that I wanna say is that the capital gains tax is only gonna to apply to you when you actually sell 
your stock or your cryptocurrency. So I'll give you an example. If you buy Bitcoin and it goes up in value. So you bought Bitcoin and it's gone up in value by $50,000. You're not going to pay taxes on that, on that increase in value if you did not sell the Bitcoin yet. Because it's when you sell, that's what triggers the taxable event. So if you bought it, it's gone up in value and you haven't sold it yet, then you did not trigger a taxable event. Therefore, you will not be paying taxes on that gain yet. So I hope that makes sense. If you learned something new or if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe. And just so you know, I have so many other videos about the stock market investing tips and investing mistakes. I also have cryptocurrency videos for beginners and I also have videos about taxes. All this information is at your service, 100% completely free. So I wanna see you succeed, happy investing, and please take care.